Howdy, howdy, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, I'm coming back home to College Station. I, I'm gonna be better. Howdy everybody, my name is Mark Parrish. I'm a 1988 graduate of A&M Consolidated High School and I'm thrilled to be here today to talk to you about the past 100 years of A&M Consolidated, something about which I wrote a book. That book is titled 100 Years, Stories of the A&M Consolidated Centennial. Stories are great, so I'd like to begin and end my remarks with a story. So during my days across the street, as a student at Consol in the 1980s, a non-binding referendum was sponsored by Tiger staff and administration. And I do not know why this referendum took place or how it came to be, but we all voted. Uh, maybe, maybe one of you knows the answer, but I do not. Nevertheless, the entire student body was polled on a question, and the question was, would you prefer to change the school's name to College Station High School, or do you vote to keep a and Consolidated? Well, despite my curiosity about why this poll was occurring, my vote was an easy one. I wanted a change. High schools should proudly represent the cities in which they are located. Bryan High represents Bryan, Austin High represents Austin. Surely College Station should be represented by a College Station High School. Besides, why would I want a name tied to a college I had no intention of enrolling in anyway? And what does the word consolidated even mean? Isn't that the name of the company in the movie 9 to 5 with Lily Tomlin and Dolly Parton? I didn't really understand. So for me, it was a simple choice. Change the name. But I was in a tiny minority. Overwhelmingly, the A&M Consolidated student body was not with me. They voted to keep A&M Consolidated. I rolled my eyes, shrugged, and moved on. And not, not long after that, I graduated from Consol and left for Austin College in Sherman, Texas, a school that, which was the anti-Texas A&M, an NCAA Division III liberal arts-focused school with a small enrollment and much smaller crowds than one would find at Kyle Field. The high school in Sherman, their name was Sherman High. That made sense to me. That's the beginning of my story. I'll come back to the end a little bit later. So although I left in 1988, I was raised in College Station. My parents, Linda and Paul, arrived in 1974. Linda is right over there. My brother, Gavin, was raised uh, in College Station with me. He was, he's a consult tiger as well. Gavin is right there. My wife, Diane, right there, she received an MBA from Texas A&M. Uh, Diane is here. My son, Alex, is, will be an Aggie engineer next year, and we're very excited that we're coming back home to College Station. And my daughter, Malia, uh, she, her story is still to be determined, and we'll be excited to watch. Uh, Arkansas class of 1988 will be celebrating our 35th reunion this weekend. So College Station City Council Member William Wright's invitation to come and speak could not have come at a better time. Thank you, William. Uh, the class of 88 will be gathering at locations in and around the Texas A&M campus from Friday to Sunday. And uh, thanks, William, for the invitation. And uh, I'm gonna go right from this to start the reunion. So why did I write a book about my high school? It's a funny story. Back in 2018, I was at another reunion of the class of 88, the 30th reunion in College Station. And in that year, I was writing a lot online about my alma mater, the kangaroos of Austin College. At the 30th reunion, a fellow class of 88 classmate, Randy Bond, came up to me and he went on and on and on about how much he loved all of the Austin College writing. And I said to him, what are you up to? And he said, okay, I admit it about to turn 100 years old and we are getting a committee together to celebrate in College Station and we want you on it to write, to write about Consol, its history and, uh, and for awareness and, and, and whatnot. And I said, uh, you know what, that sounds great. Randy Bond uh, is from a family in College Station with four generations who have passed through the halls of A&M Consolidated. And Randy was determined to form this committee to celebrate 100 years of a and <clears throat> So uh, he told me, just, just hang out in Austin, write about whatever you think is interesting, 
and, uh, and that will be your contribution. So that's what I did from 2019 to 2021. I wrote a weekly story about a and Consolidated. The A&M Consolidated Centennial Committee took shape that same year in 2019. Uh, by that year, Brad Corrier, Shel Shelley Peters, Heather Simmon, Julie Schultz, Katie Scott, and Kelly Wexbeck had been added to the team. We were just a bunch of working stiffs raising families who thought it would be cool to celebrate the 100th birthday of a school from which we had long since departed. And it was cool. We had all attended Consol when it was the young school in the young Brazos Valley town of College Station. In 2020, though, Consol was now the August statesman turning 100 in a region with numerous high schools and probably many more to come. From 2019 to 2020, the a and Consolidated Centennial Committee raised funds for the display of Centennial banners on campus and the construction of a beautiful Centennial Plaza next to Tiger Field. The plaza is right down the road, and I recommend after lunch you take a look. We're probably going to do the same. It's got benches and everything. You'll find generous donors engraved on the benches, as well as more modest donors on the plaza bricks. Uh, after construction costs were paid for, the committee donated remaining centennial funds directly to the College Station ISD Education Foundation. The total contributions were over $35,000 delivered at the plaza dedication in 2021. My contribution to the centennial was the writing. In 2019, I returned home to Austin and began to think about my high school. How frequently would I write? What topics would I write about? Was there anything to say at all? I eventually decided that there was absolutely a lot to say and that I'd write one story online a week from 2019 through 2020. These stories eventually turned into the book 100 Years and all sales of the book after costs go directly to the College Station ISD Education Foundation. And I'm proud to say that so far 270 copies have been purchased with over $1,000 directed to the foundation. So I'm here today to talk about my high school, the book, and the stories within the book. And the stories fall into one of three categories. The people of Consol, the institutions of Consol, and the historical ties between Consolidated and Texas A&M. The effort produced 57 stories, 28 stories were about the people, 12 were about the institutions, and 17 connect A&M Consolidated to that university down the street. So I like starting with people, so let's start with the first category, the people. Consol has a healthy number of accomplished alumni in the United States, and on the Centennial Committee, we worked real hard to get interviews with them to be included alongside a story. And people who aren't from College Station may think, well, that must have been difficult. But if you're a College Station native, you know how easy it was. Someone on the committee always seemed to know a brother or a neighbor or a friend. A simple phone call would be placed to a College Station local with influence, and the next thing you knew, voila, instant interview. College Station mothers were especially our go-to. No matter who you are, you always listen to your mother. It's Thomas Sadowski, he's a well-known stage, film, and TV actor who has worked alongside James Brolin, Reese Witherspoon, and Jeff Daniels. You may have seen him in the show The Newsroom or interviewed on The Stephen Colbert Show. Marcus Moore is an international correspondent for ABC News. This former Consol journalism student now travels the globe reporting on international stories. Emily Pulley is an accomplished opera singer who has performed for U.S. presidents alongside Placido Domingo. Sasha Cook is yet another outstanding opera performer who is following in Emily's footsteps on the national stage. The committee jokingly referred, began to refer to Consol as Opera U because apparently we are the go-to high school in Texas for opera stars. Larry Fedora's college football coaching stints have taken him to Florida, Oklahoma State, North Carolina, Baylor, and the University of Texas. Matthew Berry of ESPN and NBC is a well-known sports media personality in the face of a growing fantasy sports industry. Gwen Ash is not only an accomplished academic, but she's also a former champion on the Alex Trebek show Jeopardy. Alan Bratton is not just a golf coach who has won NCAA national championships. He's also a former Tiger golfer who was in school with me, 
who left to output Tiger Woods in a sudden death playoff to earn Oklahoma State a national championship over Stanford. Los Angeles Laker Alex Caruso let me interview him at the Staples Center after practice with LeBron James. Months later, he and James won an NBA title for the Lakers. Christine Wormuth, Consol Class of 1987 and current United States Secretary of the Army, would have been another great interview. Sadly, her appointment came just after publication. We ran out of time. All of these interviews and many others can be found in the book 100 Years. But the stories of the people of Consol are more than accomplished alumni today. They also include those who are or were foundational teachers, administrators, and coaches at the school itself. Red Cashin was a story. Cashin graduated from Consol in the 1940s and became one of the most recognizable faces, uh, uh, the most recognizable face of referees within the National Football League in the 1980s. He was tasked with officiating Super Bowls on more than one occasion. Chrissy Hester and Gwen Elder were both stories. Chrissy is a beloved former consult principal who is now associated with Chrissy's Closet, a low-cost clothing outlet for students of limited means. Gwen Elder is the current consult principal who led consult girls basketball to a state title game in the 1980s. I know because I was a consult student at that title game in Austin. Stories about administrators, teachers, coaches, and alumni such as Ann Fleming, hi Ann, Horace Schaefer, Bill Lancaster, Jack Churchill, Bill Patton, Bobby Slovak, and Kip Corrington can be read within. Interviewing accomplished consult people was an awesome part of the writing project. The second part, of, the second category of the stories involves cons consult institutions. Um, a 100-year-old school like a and Consolidated will have its share of institutions, and many stories are devoted to these. Do you know any Bingle Bells? There's a story about the history of this group alongside its founder. Do you remember the 1991 state championship football team of Coach Ross Rogers? I know my brother Gavin does. That was his senior year in high school. My senior year was not quite as fun. There's a tale about that victory in the Astrodome. There's a story about Tiger Tennis. Carol Creel, a successful tennis coach at Lake Travis High School in Austin, led Consol Tennis to a state tournament in dramatic fashion. Golf is not forgotten either. Coach B.B. Holland guided Consol to a state tournament won by Austin High's Ben Crenshaw. Not too shabby. And Jack, we have you to thank for that. Tiger Baseball gets a shout out too in a story about an, an incredible game highlighted by the feats of former Consol football coach Lee Fedora. Many of these stories are Richard Linklater-like period pieces that look back at 10 decades of Consol. Tiger cheerleading gets a look back, as do the numerous campuses of A&M Consolidated since 1920. A hundred years of A&M Consolidated graduations are highlighted as well, as is the Tiger rivalry with the Vikings of Bryan and more informal consult institutions like Cafe XL and Pepe's Mexican Food. On MLK Day, the story of Lincoln High was written. Lincoln High and A&M Consolidated merged during the era of desegregation. Lincoln Center now stands at the site of this former consult campus and is a fixture in the community the day we celebrate Martin Luther King. But perhaps my favorite consult story about institutions involves of all things, the prom. During my day as a student, there were persistent and varying rumors about ties between A&M Consolidated and the famous Texan rock group ZZ Top. I became determined to find out what the actual story was. I'm sure there were others who knew it, but now I do too. I did find out and wrote the story. In 1969, Rock legend Billy Gibsons was the lead, uh, lead of the up-and-coming band Moving Sidewalks. Moving Sidewalks was asked to perform at the A&M Consolidated Prom that year, and they agreed. The 1969 prom took place in what is now the gym of the current A&M Consolidated Junior High. The name recognition of Gibbons was already high, so much so that many Bryan College Station residents who were not Consol students were caught attempting to sneak into the 1969 prom. Just a few months after that, 
Gibbons performed with moving sidewalks at the iconic 1969 Woodstock Festival. The band went on tour, opening for Jimi Hendrix. In 1970, Gibbons left moving sidewalks and formed the band ZZ Top. The famous Texas band peaked during my years at Console and has since been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And who knew? For ZZ Top, a tiger prom started it all. The people in the institutions were fun to write about, but probably my favorite part were the stories tying Console to Texas a and Every high school can lay claim to good stories about its people and institutions, but no school has quite the unique origin story as a and Consolidated. James Knox Walker was a story. The A&M Consolidated Campus was located on the campus of Texas A&M between 1920 and 1940, and Walker wrote a story about his time then as a Consol student in his book, Over at College. Texas A&M has strong ties to <coughs> Presidents Franklin Roosevelt and George Herbert Walker Bush. Both also have ties to Tigers, which is documented in another story. The Spirit of Aggieland, the well-known tune, uh, that well-known tune was written by fighting Texas Aggie band leader Richard Dunn, who led the Tiger Band after his days at A&M. E. King Gill is famous for giving birth to the 12th man tradition at Texas A&M in 1922. At that time, he was also an Aggie student athlete who crossed paths with Tigers in the Aggie slash Consol classrooms of old Guion Hall. The famous Texas A&M National Championship in football in 1939, that legendary undefeated season at Kyle Field took place during the Consol era on the A&M campus when Tiger football was also competing at Kyle Field. Martin Hayes, the Aggie administrator and faculty member who founded A&M Consolidated is a story, as is Aggie president James Earl Rudder, the D-Day hero who sent his children to Consol. The story of Bear Bryant's Junction Boys in 1954 is a well-told tale. Junction Boys Gene Stallings and Jack Pardee were frequent guests at Tiger football banquets hosted by console coaches Dick Gardemal and Edsel Jones. Miss Lil Munnerlin was a classically trained College Station musician who composed the song The Twelfth Man, which was featured in the Aggie classic movie We've Never Been Licked. Munnerlin was listed in the credits of the movie. But my favorite Munderland tune may be the one which begins, Voices Ring Out to Thee, Hail CHS. It's the A&M Consolidated Fight Song. Edwin Jackson Kyle, the former ag agricultural professor who donated the, donated the land that would become Kyle Field. Kyle was an original member of the A&M Consolidated Board of Trustees in 1920. William Thomas Free was a Consol Tiger who enlisted in 1940 to join his Brazos Valley father in the U.S. Navy. Both father and son were killed aboard the USS Arizona when Pearl Harbor was attacked on December 7, 1941. That fact made my own family's recent trip to Hawaii even more memorable. So what makes A&M Consolidated unique amongst high schools is this third category, the school's historic ties to Texas A&M and its birth on the Texas A&M campus. And it's worth diving into that history in full. The Texas Agricultural and Mechanical College was founded in 1876 in the lush rural farming area of the Brazos Valley. The campus was isolated, located many miles away from the larger town of Bryan and the much smaller communities of Welburn, Shiloh, Union, and Rock Prairie. Texas A&M acquired a high degree of self-sufficiency over the decades, which passed. However, and this isolation was not an obstacle during the decades of growth which followed. But more growth meant more families of administration, faculty, and staff, and suddenly a new problem emerged. How best to educate the children of these new Aggie families in an era when the city of College Station would not be established for another 20 years. In one Texas town after another, the creation of the school district, district followed the establishment of the city. The foundation of Bryan, Texas led to the creation of Bryan ISD, which could publicly fund the school books, teacher salaries, and brick and mortar buildings to educate the children of the town. The same was true for cities from Austin and San Antonio to Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston. 
administrators, faculty, and staff who lived on the Texas A&M campus in the early 20th century began clamoring for a similar taxing authority to fund public education. A&M had the library and classrooms and academic brain power to provide a fabulous education for young children. There was one problem, however, as a state entity on state land, Texas A&M could not be taxed to fund this endeavor. At the same time, the smaller communities of Welburn, Shiloh, Union, and Rock Prairie were facing a different problem. While their locations on private land allowed for the establishment of tax base, their small size, lack of wealth, and relative isolation made the establishment of any high quality public school practically impossible. These communities might have considered combining their efforts into a single school district, but the transportation costs associated with shuttling their students into a single school would have been insurmountable. These localities in some way had the opposite problem of the Aggies' families on campus. And that's when Aggie professor Martin L. Hayes proposed an ingenious solution to a unique problem. He imagined a school district which would consolidate the students of Aggie families with the students of rural Brazos County. Welburn, Shiloh, Union, and Rock Prairie would agree to the establishment of taxing authorities for a school district which included untaxed Aggie families on campus. In exchange, Texas A&M families agreed to provide classrooms, books, and materials nearly free of charge. The new school district, district revenue would go overwhelmingly to teaching, coaching, and administrative salaries. It was a great deal for rural Brazos County, whose students suddenly had access to a fabulous educational experience at Texas A&M at a minimal cost. It was also a great deal for Aggie families, whose students were now being instructed by Aggie professors funded by these rural communities. But one final problem remained. How in the world to get the students of limited means in these small Brazos Valley communities to the A&M campus? Well, Texas A&M administration devised a clever solution. Aggie volunteers would drive small Aggie trucks to each location to serve as that community's de facto school bus. This simple and selfless idea was the final piece of the puzzle in the establishment of a novel, unique school district in Texas, the new A&M Consolidated School District. And my favorite part of this history, one of those volunteer truck drivers back in the 1920s was the great grandfather of my 1988 Consol classmate, Randy Bond, who I'll see at the reunion on Saturday and who was a member of the Centennial Committee. Lately, I've been thinking about my high school days at Consol, especially when I was asked to vote on whether or not to change the name to College Station High School. And as I mentioned earlier, I was a College Station boy, and it seemed rational that my high school would reflect the city of my youth instead of a college I would not choose. Those days, however, are long gone. I was raised in the shadow of Texas A&M. My parents were academics at Texas A&M. My wife got a degree from Texas A&M. My son will be a fighting Texas Aggie in the fall. And I'll be on the campus of Texas A&M this weekend celebrating the 35th reunion of my A&M consolidated high school class. Because of the experience writing this book, I now have a true understanding of just how intricately tied those two institutions are. There is no A&M Consolidated without Texas A&M, and both existed for some time before the arrival of any city. The two are historically one and the same, sharing a collective story. And that story is unique, one that cannot be replicated at other high schools around the state of Texas. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the Mark who was a student across the street at Consol was wrong. And the Mark who wrote the Consol book is right. Turns out I am a proud graduate of a high school called A&M Consol. Thank you very much.